what if moving forward, you just decided to explore the possibility that maybe emotions were a superpower you can use when necessary that you haven't been aware of? Yeah, I could be totally convinced of that, yes. Because my goal here is to try to get you as integrated as possible and as open as possible. When I'm coaching people, I'm not trying to make you successful. I'm, not try I'm trying to get you open because you're literally one phone call. You're one phone call away from a deal that changes the financial history of your lineage for 10 generations. One deal, one yeah. call. But the average person is running around freaking out that there's no call happening, so they never get that. The way to get deals like that is to be open to deals like that. And the way to do that is to hold yourself in non-specific certainty in the unknown. It's easy to be certain in the known, but the unknown is where it challenges you. Because if you start to play at the, hey, I want to play at my full potential, that's the most difficult path to play. Welcome to Transform with Jason Drees. Don't forget to join me every Monday at 10 a.m. Central for a free mindset alignment. Don't start your week out of alignment. Go to mondaymindsetreset.com to sign up now. On today's episode, I've got another amazing Go Abundance member. In case you've noticed, I hang around a lot of these amazing men. With me today is Adam Labar out of Tampa, Florida. He's 38. He's married. He's got three kids, nine years old, five years old, and 11 months. He's a military veteran that runs an education company that teaches veterans how to invest in real estate. He's also a real estate investor, and he homeschools. So I'm excited to connect today, Adam. How are you today, sir? I am doing fantastic. Thank you very much for having me on, Jason, and uh, looking forward to our chat. Yeah. So what should we talk about? What do you want coaching on? Like, which direction should we... What's up? What's coming up for you today? So I guess one of the things that I get stuck in all the time um, is a bit of... Uh, I guess it's maybe it's two different things, analysis paralysis and imposter syndrome. Um, so I... Uh, I, I grew up with uh, very little, um, joined the military right out of high school. Um, you know, eventually, uh, long story short, married my wife, um, who had a thing called a savings account that I had never heard of before, started learning about investing, started learning all this stuff. And then I kind of, um, I, I finally hit the uh, seven figure net worth. And I, th I think my, mentally I told myself, oh, great, I've made it. And then I kind of put it in cruise. Um, but getting to that point was I was just always stuck. Like I needed one more thing before I could invest. I needed one more bit of knowledge. I needed one more bit of whatever and never took the action. And then finally took action, made a difference in my life and my, in my family's life. And then I was like, okay, well now I'm stuck. This is where I'm at. And I, you know, I, I just meet these hurdles and I just stick right there and think, okay, well I finally made it. And, and choosing to get past those moments is always difficult for me. And I've caught myself doing it again where I'm at right now. So, um, you know, it, it's a repeatable thing in my life. What specifically is the pattern? Um, I'd say that, uh, I, uh, and I'll, I'll have to say that it's probably my, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's a lot, a lot of my life, but it's, um, I have something I finally figure out I want to chase. I chase it down. I reach something and then I'm stuck for a long time. Um, where I'm like, okay, well I reached it now what, you know, and then I've got to go figure something else out to, to chase. I mean, who knows how long that's going to take, you know, whether it's a, um, you know, at, like I thought that that, that dollar value of getting a seven figure net worth was going to do it. And then. I mean, I just stuck there and it was like, well, I, I mean, it's hanging out and go abundant with a bunch of go abundance guys that I'm watching grow like crazy and I'm not, and I'm like, what is going on? Why can't I get past some of these things? So, and I did the same thing with it. If it's, even if it's something, e you know, emotional where, you know, I'm trying to be a better leader for my company. Um, I'll get to a certain point where I think I've, I've got where I need to go. And then I'm, I just get stuck there and I'm like, no, I know I need to go farther. I just can't figure out how to break through that whatever that is. Like, I, I don't know if I'm, I'm mentally just stopping myself from going to that next level or what, but what is the metric you're seeing? That's telling you that you're not progressing to the next level. Uh, well, on net worth, obviously you're, you're looking at a, at a number like, and that, that should be growing. Right. So, um, uh, other things are like, I'll sit there and tell myself that I know I need to underwrite more deals, but it's like, oh, well, I've already underwritten 200 of them and they're all a waste of time. So, um, you know, like why underwrite 201, uh, you know, uh, but that's how you get to grow these things. Right. And the same thing with my leadership stuff. Like if it's a metric of like, um, how I'm communicating with my, with my team or, um, you know, and if, if I do something that I think is, is not the way that I should be leading. Well, I just missed that metric. So then I'm just like, well, clearly I'm not, you know, uh, meeting where I want to go. It's that one sheet, right? The uh, dreaded yes. one sheet. Yeah. The one sheet is a go abundance tracking tool. Um, I've never actually filled one out. Impressive. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't track those metrics because you can sit here and stare at your net worth every week and, yeah. and measure that as a, as a, as a value of your success. Um, 
the the desire for more, right, is is part of being an entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. The person and and you can call entrepreneurs blessed. You can call us cursed that we see things better than they are, and we always want to make them there. Like I've literally been on vacation with my wife, and I'm like, oh my god, in the next vacation we should do this, and she's like, can we enjoy this one first? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and that's part of that's part business, it's part entrepreneur, but it's also part like emotional growth, awakening, integration of mind and ego, right? Because the ego part of us always wants mm -hmm. more and more and more is never satisfied. And the other part is satisfied with everything that it is. So there's that mix right there. And when we, when we, when we start early on as entrepreneurs, usually we're driven by the desire for something. And it's usually more money, more money, more cash flow, more resources. So there's that, that desire that's there. And you, if you, if you don't change that mode of operation, you'll never be satisfied. Right. So we can look at the pattern you've been operating in and you can say that I'm not creating success and I'm not leveling up because my net worth's not growing. You could also look at this process at, at your process and say, well, the process doesn't seem to be accelerating as much as I want to right now, but that's actually happening because the acceleration needs a different version of me. Mm -hmm. The version of you are, you are right now got you to here. The version of you is not going to get you there because it's not getting you there. Yeah. So it's very easy to look at this process and say it's not working. But this actually is what the process looks like right now. So let's just notice any resistance you may have, may have had prior to this call about the lack of growth of your net worth. Mm -hmm. And just, let's just take that resistance and just push it aside for a second, right? Because we know that, you know, I can see you've got a roof over your head, right? You don't look like you're starving mm -hmm. and I'm guessing you're still helping people, you mm -hmm. know, now you may not be crushing it at this moment. It's also a challenging market in real estate this mm -hmm. past year has been a little bit different, but let's notice that your desires and your intuition has been telling you for years to grow and grow and grow and grow. We're at a phase where the growth is not looking like that, but it's almost, but remember like going up, we have to go down sometimes, yeah. right? So this is basically an evil, this is an opportunity for an evolution of you. And when you're out of alignment at a global level or when you're out of alignment with the process, then you can get into analysis, paralysis, circle, doubting, imposter syndrome, and all of those things. Yeah. But all of those things are your brain's attempts to analyze why you're not moving at the level you want. Now, we can, we can dive into mechanically and look at the pieces or the actions that are or are not are happening. But the the elevated way to do this is to operate from a place of alignment. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do you have a piece of paper? Yeah, I'm taking notes right now. Okay. So let me I'm gonna give you a simple diagram. Okay. okay. So in the middle of the paper, write the word action. Okay. And then and then draw a circle around that. Mm -hmm. And then draw a bigger circle around that circle and call the middle middle circle mindset. And then make a bigger circle that's quite a lot bigger. The third cir circle, make it a lot bigger and call that frame. And then draw an arrow from the outside of the center, outside of the circle pointing to the center. Like that. Okay. So you've got action, mindset, frame. Yep. So right now, you're basically saying, hey, Jason, I'm not getting the results that I want right now. I know I should be doing more. It's almost like you're, you're in the car and you're, you got the pedal to the metal. The wheels are spinning, but nothing's happening, mm -hmm. right? Because you're still taking the action. So your brain is telling you the action I'm taking is probably wrong. I need to take a different action. Is, I'm, I'm guessing that's where you've been thinking. It's a different action. It's a different strategy. Because at the end of the day, your brain, which grew up in a three-dimensional reality, knows that at the end of the day, it's an action you're after. Mm -hmm. Prior to this call, you don't know what that action is. You're trying different actions, but you're not seeing the movement. Yeah. The thing we want to understand is let, let's, let's step back a little bit and really look at how to hit the next target. Cause the next, the next evolution is, is a different version of you. And right now you're in the old version. Okay. So mm -hmm. what we need to do is align you with the new version because the new version knows what to do. Like, have you ever had a time in your life where you didn't know what to do? You didn't know what to do. And then all of a sudden, boom, you knew what to do. Yeah. 
it's funny because I, I talk to people about something similar. I, I have a, uh, I talk to people about a wireframe that you have that's built off of your previous experiences um, and everything kind of fits in that wireframe. And until something comes and ruins that wireframe and creates a new one for you, you're stuck looking at things in that same frame. And I don't do it well myself, clearly. So, <laughs> Well, I, I also can't coach myself. So I, yeah. the same way I get it too, right? I've got my fault. <laughs> but the, the, the thing we want to talk about with your model, mm-hmm. your model, your framework is refer- referencing known targets, mm-hmm. meaning targets you know how to do. Where we're going is unknown. So that framework doesn't apply. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'll get to the known unknown in a second. So back to this framework right here. So action is what we're after that you know that's the magical action we're after where does action come from action comes from your mind your mind mm-hmm. creates the action if your mindset is in alignment with the target it'll generate an action that works if your mindset is not in alignment with the target it'll generate an action that does not work okay does that make sense yep okay what is alignment? So right on the top of that paper, alignment is 100% certain or 100% certainty or 100% confidence. You are in alignment when you are 100% certain you can hit the target. That's alignment. Prior to this call, I'm guessing if we talked, if I asked you, where are you at in your real estate work, this business growth this year, you may be 60 to 90% somewhere in there. Cause I'm mm-hmm. guessing where you've been, right? Mm-hmm. Which, which we want to interpret. And this is the thing you want to like bury this in your brain is that that's the same thing as the GPS the, in your car being 60 to 90% right. You may get there, but it's going to take a long time with the wrong address in the car. And the handicap we have, and you especially being a military veteran. Now, I'm not in military and I have a lot of respect for you. At the same time, I understand you guys weren't, weren't taught how to manage feel, to lead by your feelings, right? It's get shit done. Get yeah. it done. Feelings, Get feelings are not done. the thing. Logic is my, is my drive. <laughs> so, so grinding is easy for you, mm-hmm. but we've got grinding and we've got naturally inspired action and flow, right? Mm-hmm. Naturally inspired action and flow is where the magic is. Grinding is what we do when we don't know what to do because hard work does not create success. Hard work may be a component of success. But what actually creates success is alignment with success. And what's been happening is the model you've been operating from isn't working anymore. And you're out of alignment and you're just simply pushing the car in the wrong directions. And then your brain is now overanalyzing. Oh, it must be imposter syndrome, analysis, paralysis, because you're literally in the wrong frame. Yeah. Okay. So back to this diagram right here. So again, mindset creates action. Frame creates mindset. So frame, frame is like the frequency of you. Your body is made of atoms, so does mine, right? So we're pure energy. We live in an attraction-based reality. We know like attracts like. But frame is the frequency of you. So the frequency of you creates the frequency of your thoughts, which is your mindset. Your mindset creates your action. So, for example, if Adam is in a happy frame or a happy frequency, he'll have a happy mindset and happy actions. If he's in a sad frame, he'll have a sad frequency, sad mindset, sad action. Okay. And right prior to this call, you were in a frame that was not 100% certain Mm -hmm. on how to move out of the spot. You were getting the subsequent mindset in action. And you were attempting to solve. Now you felt the misalignment. You feel misalignment at the mindset level Mm -hmm. where you feel heaviness, negative emotion, or doubt. That's at the mindset level. So those, you've been getting indicators of that, but you didn't know what to do. You've been working harder because that's what you've been taught to do. (laughs) When it doesn't work, work harder. But so the new mode of operation is when we're out of alignment, we want to stop because we're just wasting our time. You're pushing in the wrong direction. So the thing is, we need to move from a frame that's out of alignment to a frame that's in alignment. And if you move to a frame that's in alignment, you'll then generate an aligned mindset, aligned action. Mm -hmm. So that's. This is the new level of mindset coaching, right? This is called alignment coaching. All the other models of results-based coaching is at these two levels right here. What's the action you're supposed to take? Okay, I'm going to hold you accountable to taking it, right? That's the old way. But that's forcing misaligned action. So let's let's do a, let me give you an example of a frame shift, okay? Okay. So, and we need to talk known, unknown after this. So 
Let's do a quick repeat after me statement. And I'm, and I'm going to generalize your goals a bit, but it'll still work. Okay, okay. So try this out loud. I take full ownership of my life and everything in it. I take full ownership of my life and everything in it. I'm going to find a way. I'm going to find a way. To get my business growing again. To get my business growing again. And my portfolio growing again. And my portfolio growing again. At the pace it should be. At the pace it should be. Even if I don't know how. Even if I don't know how. Because I'm not going to stop until I do. Because I'm not going to stop until I do. Good. Does that help? Gotta, we're, we're, how, how certain are, is that? Uh, it's similar as, as I was literally listening to your book, writing, like mowing my lawn. And I was doing the same thing, like mowing my lawn, saying these things. And I was like, man, I really got to figure out um, aligning my logical brain with that statement. Because I, I, I have such a difficult time with the emotional side of my emotional side of me that my logic completely takes over. Okay. So if that makes sense. That's, that's an old story. Yeah. Right. So let's go above that story. That story is okay. from a frame of reference, reference point, because your brain's been cataloging everything that's gone into it prior to now, which creates your mindset, right? Mm -hmm. Which like you had talked about is your framework for success. It's your framework for success in the known. Okay. When you're aiming at an unknown target, it's your biggest limitation. How does a military guy chase an unknown target? <laughs> <laughs> Great question. Great question. And I just showed you how. Yeah. You, because the statement I gave, now we'll get back, because basically that statement didn't align 100% because you have a secondary belief contradicting it, but we'll get to that in a second. Mm -hmm. The statement I give you, so let's try this again. I'm going to find a way to hit the target. I'm going to find a way to hit the target. Even if I don't know what the target is. Even if I don't know what the target is. Because I'm not going to stop until I do. Because I'm not going to stop until I do. Okay, so you feel that certainty there? Mm-hmm. So that's what I call non-specific certainty. So that allows us, that creates, call it almost like a global, I would call global or macro, right? That's like a macro frame of success. At the highest level, Adam is aligned with hitting the target because he's using the power of a decision. And Adam knows that he has 100% control over when he stops. So when you say, I'm not going to stop until I hit that target, that's certainty right there. Mm -hmm. So that allows you to create a, a, an aligned frame at the macro level. That's like your macro success frame. That's the starting point. You also have micro frames as well. Like what does he do this week? Yep. What matters is the macro frame because the macro frame is the frequency of you. And that's what the law of attraction responds to. And the law of attraction is not just pray and then Amazon shows up, right? It's, it's, it's you, you focus your conscious awareness and then you start thinking different thoughts. Mm -hmm. Then you have different thought patterns. Then you have new desires. And then instead of going for, you know, a sandwich every day for lunch, you go get a salad and all of a sudden you meet a new contact there. Mm -hmm. So law of attraction is absolutely part of it, but, but starting with the frame shifting, this, this tool holds you in alignment at the global level. So it can start the process of bringing the other aligned mindset in because this is operating at a higher frequency of reality than action creates reality. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is not action creates reality. This is reality creates your action. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about beliefs for a second. Okay. Human belief, human beings believe something 100% or 0%. That's it. We, we don't have partial beliefs. We do have situations where we believe something 50%. What actually is happening in that situation is we have a secondary or multiple beliefs contradicting that one belief. So when I gave you that repeat after me statement at the large frame, your brain is firing off. Can I believe this? Mm -hmm. And it's, firing off the reference points that are contradicting it. Coincidentally, this is the process of alignment coaching that we do. The process is getting you clear on where you are, clear on where you're going, and then over time, removing all the contradictions and tend until you're left with nothing with alignment. Yeah. Okay. So this is actually a subtraction game. So let's go back for a second. So let me ask you, do you want to believe that frame shifting works? 
Yes. Okay. So how much right now do you believe it works out of 100%? Oh, I know it works. I've seen it work with people. <laughs> no, but but do you believe it works for you? Uh, yes. 100%? I mean, you told me it's either 100 or zero, so I'd, I'd say yes, well, 100%, right? Well, so, no, no, but I'm telling you, I'm, I'm sensing doubt. So I'm like, really, what's the real number? What's the real yeah. number? Um, no, I, I know it will work. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to let's go back to that global frame I gave you. So try mm-hmm. this out loud. I take full ownership of my life and everything in it. I take full ownership of my life and everything in it. I'm going to find a way. I'm going to find a way. To get my portfolio growing again. To get my portfolio growing again. Even if I don't know how. Even if I don't know how. Because I'm not going to stop until I do. Because I'm not going to stop until I do. Okay. Where are you from zero to 100% on that statement? 100%. Okay. All right. So that shifted, though, from a few moments ago. Yeah. Okay. So just notice, right? So sometimes... Sometimes there's a contradicting belief because when you said it the first time, I sensed a little bit of doubt. Mm -hmm. What else? What happened? So sometimes there is a belief there that we would need to go change. But in this situation, the effect of the frame shift was still processing. Yeah. And I think putting the, the actual label on it and the, what I'm actually doing helped me keep the frame around it, right? Instead of just, will will changing my frame work? It's, will changing this idea of how this will work? Like this, this, this frame specifically, is that going to change? And yeah, I think that makes a lot of, like, yeah, I can yes. definitely do that. So what you just did is you found, you identified, this is great, you identified the frame that was contradicting it mm-hmm. and you changed it. Okay. Does I see that? Mm-hmm. So that's, that's the entire process that I'm doing here. It's, it's not rocket science, but when, when it's just you sitting in your thoughts, it's hard to identify that. Mm -hmm. So it's really get yourself into alignment with what you want, move the direction you want. And the second you feel any type of contradiction, that's a frame as well, you know? And I would also encourage you that that frame that says, well, my brain is, doesn't deal with the emotional stuff too well. Like, let's let that go. Yeah, I've got to figure that one out. That's <laughs> well. Let's well let well let's do it right. Let's do it right now. So, give me that statement again. Uh, which statement? The you said something about my brain doesn't process oh, emotion. Yeah, I don't. Like I that. don't. Uh, my brain is. You know, you are taking a bunch of those different. Of course, these are things that that uh, uh, can can tell you about yourself, even though they're not really telling you about yourself. But one of those tests of like, okay, well, how how logic brained are you and stuff? And it's I am always like pegging the logic side of the house. And, um, I almost look at everything in a very logical framework and I have a hard time doing the, the, the only time the emotion really comes out is with my family. Other than that, I have almost no emotion tied to anything. And it's very difficult for me to, to connect on an emotional level or to think through things on an emotional level. It's always okay. Logic evidence-based. Is there a situation where you wanted to be emotional and you weren't recently or a common pattern? Um, I'd say even as a leader in my company, I prefer that I would be a little bit more emotionally in tune, at least, um, instead of such a such uh, pure logic looking at things. Okay, so what's preventing you from being more emotionally in tuned at work? Um, I think the way I look at it is emotions fuzzy the battlefield; they don't allow you to see things the way they actually are. So why allow them to come in and bother with the ability to actually make the decision that needs to be made? Do you still want to believe that? Sometimes. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Because, because that's, I mean, that's, uh, again, goes back to my life's experience has shown me that when emotion gets involved, I, me personally, I tend to make bad decisions when I allow my emotions to help me or to make the decisions for me. But when I use logic, my decisions tend to be a lot better. Although you're not on the same type of battlefield these days. Well, no. Yeah. It's a very different battlefield, but, and, but, but I mean, that's, that's, yeah, nobody, nobody's shooting at me. Nobody's dying today in the world of real estate. So, uh, (laughs) so that's the old way. 
So now that that let's also say that that's probably protecting you in some way too. Mm -hmm. Because. Go ahead. You know, I was going to say I've avoided a lot of very bad decisions by using pure logic, which of course now I use that as an excuse to continue using pure logic. Okay. Well, we want to make the best decisions we can. Yep. Do you take into account intuition into uh, decisions? Very rarely. Gut instinct? Very rarely. Okay. Well, if you follow your conditioning, you'll end up being average. Okay. Right? Now, you may not be following your conditioning, but the point I was making here is that in certain scenarios, yes, life or death situations, being quick and clear in logic is much better than being emotional. Mm -hmm. um, working in the world with other people and aligning yourself with higher versions of you is going to require a different version of you, and it's going to require a more integrated version of you. Is it possible for you to actually – now, are there benefits to emotions? Very much so. So is it possible that you could leverage the benefits of logic and emotion to make amazing decisions? It's very, very possible, yes. Okay. So what if you just decided to start exploring that possibility that that frame could be true? Um, I'm open to exploring the possibility, but I, I feel like I need, I need to give myself guardrails because I, I have explored that possibility, and that's when it turns ugly is when I go too far into the emotion side. So like what does ugly, what does ugly look like? Um, losing money, having bad partners in deals, um, because I've, I've done, you know, just made quick emotional based decision as opposed to analyzing the actual situations that turned into multi-year processes to, <laughs> to end. And also that's part of being an entrepreneur. Isn't it though? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what if, what if we stopped blaming emotions as the problem? Because we don't want to battle half of ourselves, mm -hmm. right? So what if, what if we, you decided that whenever I make decisions, I'm going to use a framework that's based in logic. So you can decide whenever I'm making it, my decision-making model is this. If there's this many zeros, it's this. If there's this many zeros, it's this. Because if you're cutting off your emotions, you may also be cutting off your intuition. Mm-hmm. And your intuition, your gut instinct is that's where the magic happens. And it's easy to think a bad decision based on our emotions is the bad thing that happened. But whenever we have failures, usually the bigger the failure, the greater the success afterwards. And you're aimed at a high level. I know you are. There's not a limit to the end of goal. You're like, as much as I can, let's explore, let's expand, let's create wealth, let's create freedom, let's mm -hmm. create impact, let's serve. I know there's no limit. So let's make sure that, so, so, so those failures you have weren't proving emotions wrong. Those failures where you had were part of the process, turning you into the version that had the greater result that you were after anyway. So if we zoom out on the process, you're like, oh, this is a normal part of the process. But we zoom into that failure. Oh, my God, the emotions yeah. were terrible. So but let's just think logically about this. Like their emotions is a different source of information. And your relationship with your emotions is based on your frame about them. That's a frame as well. So I would encourage you, if you want to, to open up that frame a little bit. of. Maybe emotions aren't that bad. I'm a highly emotional individual. I wish I wasn't. I'm the opposite. But that's why I do what I, it help, really helps me because I can read everybody. They can't, you can't hide anything from me. Mm. And am I tormented by that? Sometimes, yes. But that's my process. Everybody, every superhero has a handicap. But they all do. So what if moving forward, you just decided to explore the possibility that maybe emotions were a superpower you can use when necessary that you haven't been aware of. Yeah, I could be totally convinced of that. Yes. Because my goal here is, is to try to get you as integrated as possible and as open as possible. 
Because with when I'm coaching people, I'm not trying to make you successful. I'm not. Tr- I'm trying to get you open. Mm-hmm. Because you're literally one phone call. You're one phone call away from a deal that changes the financial history of your lineage for ten generations. One deal, one yeah. call. But the average person is running around freaking out that there's no call happening, so they never get that. The way to get deals like that is to be open to deals like that. And the way to do that is to hold yourself in non-specific certainty in the unknown. It's easy to be certain in the known, but the unknown is where it challenges you. Because if you start to play at the, hey, I want to play at my full potential, that's the most difficult path to play. Because the full potential and aiming at impossible targets will bring up all of your kinks in your armor, all of your weak spots, all of your stuff, because the, 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 the one thing that limits everybody's growth is their ability to integrate what's necessary to re- achieve it. You are here. You want to aim 10% higher. You got to aim this much growth. You want to write 50% higher. You want to aim 10 X. That means you have to become a 10 X higher frequency of you, which basically means mm-hmm. you have to integrate all of the parts of you that don't, won't operate at this level. So that's always the limiting factor is how much you can integrate that. And the reason why I'm hounding you so much on emotions is because emotions are your indicators of alignment. And if you're ignoring them, you're ignoring alignment. So be grounded in logic, absolutely. At the same time, be aware of all of the input that your body and being is giving you. Emotions are your indicator of alignment. Um, pondering that for a minute, just kind of. Yeah, because remember, emotions happen at the mindset level. Mm-hmm. So you feel we feel positive and negative emotions. Positive emotions means alignment. Negative emotions means misalignment. And the greater degree indicates the greater degree of match or mismatch. Happy is aligned. Excited is really aligned. Doubtful is misaligned. Dreadful and fearful for your life is terribly aligned, right? So how does how do you work through then, you know, really excited, thinking I'm aligned, and that's why I jump in a partnership that ends up bad, right? To go back to a previous example, right? Because like at the time, I felt really aligned. Like I was like, yeah, I'm really excited about this. So how do I step back to make sure that... The logic well, is there. You're too. still thinking that partnership was bad. Well, that's true because it got me to where I am, right? So, yeah. yeah. That partnership, like that, that was your process. Mm-hmm. W- w- let me ask you do you like where you are right now? It's not where I want to be, but I'm enjoying myself. Yeah. Okay. Would you go through that again to get where you are right now? Sure. That's, yeah. And there's, there's a lot of things we don't understand. Like sometimes we're going on a detour because we're playing a role in someone else's journey for some reason. So the, like one thing I say a lot is that what you think about what you do is often more important than what you do. Mm -hmm. So one way that you can start to get more open is to kind of, when you start to become aware of judgments of of thoughts, just kind of let those frames go. Like you're only 38. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You're just getting started. We're a long way through the process. You're successful. You've got a business. You're impacting other veterans, which is awesome. You're teaching them how to create wealth, which is awesome. You've got a family. You've got community. You're not, you got a roof over your head. You did, you still have your pants on during this last year. And, and what we know is like, maybe this call today is the thing that unlocks the full you to, to align versus the mm-hmm. logic forced one. Yeah, I could, uh, I could sure hope so. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I can, I can see a path where that totally makes sense. Um, and, uh, using, cause I know I do it well with my kids. Right. That's one place I use emotion very well. Um, uh, it's one of the things I, I'm absolutely obsessed about is being a dad. 
Uh, and I know I use it well there. So if I could figure out how to harness that and use it in other parts of my life and be open to that, it'll allow me to be well, better in those other areas too. Yes. And the easy way to do that is to move into the frame where you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to, you could go, I'm going to figure out how to use my emotions everywhere in my life. You can also say, I am using emotions everywhere in my life. Yeah. That's a more present frame. If you want to dive into this process even more, hire a coach. Yeah. I'm using emotions everywhere in my life. Okay. I've got like six pages of notes already. So there you go. I had a call right before this where I even actually mentioned that to, uh, uh, to one of my team members, I was trying to, to do this. So it was serendipitous that it was right before this call. So, <laughs> <laughs> or that's what's supposed to happen, or basically. that's the way it's supposed to work, right? So, I I do end up connecting a lot of men back to their emotions. It's part of the part of the job. Yeah, we've never been taught to do this. We've never been taught to manage the emotions. We've been taught mm -hmm. to push them aside and go get shit done. Yeah. And you know, life is different now than it was ten years ago. It's different than it was five years ago. Yeah, no joke. Yeah. yeah. But the but the, the one thing for sure is that the more you lean into the growth, the more successful you'll be. Because your growth, your personal growth journey and your career are not two separate paths anymore. They're one. Mm -hmm. So if you're resisting for any reason personal growth, your business is going to stop growing until you get your attention in that area. So what I do is I just try to say yes to everything. And meaning I don't, not like I make bad decisions, but I don't back down from a target or a challenge. Because I operate in a frame where I like to explore my full potential, which is probably the most, it's, it is the most difficult, challenging thing I've ever done in my entire life. At the same time, it's the most rewarding. Mm -hmm. There's nothing as satisfying than giving it all you've got. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So I would encourage you to take that same mantra and pull it into the whole, whole side of you, not just business, the whole complete you. Then let's see what happens. All right. I'm doing it right now. It's happening. No. <laughs> Excellent. All right, Adam, you good? Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. It's great. Great to talk to you today. Yeah. You as well, Jason. Thank you. All right. I will talk to you soon. Absolutely. Thank you for watching. This is Transform with Jason Drees. To get your own experience of coaching, you can go to freeintrosession.com. Otherwise, I will see you on next week's episode. Take care. Bye-bye.